Hi, I'm Denshi. A year ago today, I made a video about the most impressive projects on Scratch, a game-making engine that lets you move about these blocks and essentially manipulate sprites on a 2D plane. Now, just using this simple game engine, people were able to create everything from physics simulators to recreations of Terraria to fully functioning 3D games. So just in case you haven't seen that video, I recommend you have a look because there's some pretty impressive stuff in there. However, in today's video, I'm not going to be talking about more games. In fact, I'm going to be tackling the other main aspect of Scratch, or main draw, that being animation. Because in the same way that I can place blocks here in a sequence and add logical elements to make a game function, I can also do the same and create an animation where, say, the cat changes size, or changes color, or changes sprite, or plays sounds, draws stuff on the screen, all sorts of different things. I don't know about you, but in my opinion, Scratch is a lot more accessible, especially to younger people, when it comes to making animations. I mean, it has a built-in drawing tool, everything is quite easy to manipulate in code, you can always look at other people's scripts and look behind people's projects if you're stuck, so I think this is actually a really, really great platform for kids to learn art and animation in addition to programming. But one more thing before I begin with this video. There are a lot of impressive animations on Scratch, and I'm going to be talking about those in today's video, but I'm not going to be sitting here and just reacting to them. This isn't a, a reaction channel. I don't consider that a fair use of people's content. So there are a lot of fantastic ones that you can check out. I'll have them linked in the description. I'm showcasing them right now if you want to have a look for yourself, but I won't be looking at static animations, you know, animations where I don't interact with anything in today's video because I don't want to feel like I'm just watching something passively and not contributing contributing with actual commentary or interaction with the content. So I'm just getting that aside. I'm not going to be talking about any story time animations or similar things on here, even though there are many impressive ones, simply because I wouldn't be able to add anything to them. So instead of doing that, I've selected a bunch of quite interactive animations, things that showcase different things people have been able to make with Scratch, and there's some pretty impressive stuff in there. Now I'm going to start this video by talking about Conway's Game of Life here, recreated on Scratch. I consider this an animation or a semi-interactive animation because it's not a game in the sense that you interact with anything. You kind of set a bunch of blocks here by clicking the edit button. and. By placing these blocks in different ways, the Conway's Game of Life logic kicks in, and the moment that you click play, the logic plays through and the Game of Life begins. Now, I'm not going to sit here and explain how the Game of Life works. Essentially, the blocks can take food from each other and all that kind of stuff. I'm not going to sit here and explain the mathematics, but the idea is no matter the starting conditions, you're always going to get an indefinite number of steps to ending conditions where the blocks just kind of stay still. So I consider this a pretty cool project. I think it's quite impressive people were able to code this in Scratch. I like that there's a random button. It can go through and create random patterns and some pretty fun and some pretty funky stuff can happen, you know? There's also a few presets here, like uh, the lightweight spaceship here, which is this little thing that moves to the right of the screen. So yeah, there's a lot of cool stuff that you can do in Conway's Game of Life. This is a pretty cool little interactive animation to start off with. Next up, we have something created by Gilo Ao, if I'm pronouncing that right, I'm not sure. This is a UI demo for a new version of Scratch, essentially. And I really like this because it's quite interactive. You can go through and look all the different pages. There's even a dark mode that you can enable and everything goes dark. That's pretty cool. And I mean, just in general, the design for this new Scratch interface looks pretty sleek in my opinion. I don't know. I think it looks pretty cool. And yeah, you can browse through all these different pages this person designed. I think it's cool that people are able to create semi like animation slideshow things just using Scratch. So I really like this. I like the colors, I like the design. It's very impressive. Next up, we have an animation of the solar system, which is entirely in 3D. This one really blew my mind when I first saw it. So you can basically look around with the mouse, move around with WASD, and it's not just limited to that. If you click on settings, you can go through and say change the speed of time. And it even calculates years for you down here. Here we're in 2018. And we can even slow or reverse time. We can do all sorts of wacky stuff. And we can also click on a few different options for orbits to make them a little bit, you know, look cool. Here's these trails. Um, you can hide names. And there's this orbit customization tab where you can change the orbits of different planets. So here I've selected, say, I don't know, uh, let me select the orbit of Earth. Where's Earth? There's Earth. So Earth's orbit, uh, you can change the way that it looks. You can make it, say, more eccentric, which makes it go really far in one direction and then closer in another direction. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is great for physics class. 
I think this is a really cool animation. I think this is probably one of the more most impressive things that I've seen when it comes to making an interactive experience. This is actually not too bad of a way to learn about orbits in the solar system, although I've already messed them up. Venus is, is way too far, so I've screwed up the orbits. And there's Pluto. Now, it only goes to the solar system, but there's a few other celestial objects around here. That's pretty cool. So yeah, this is a really, really cool animation of the solar system. There's a lot of impressive features here. And I like the feature where you can change the passage of time and the fact that it actually shows you the months as it passes. That's pretty impressive. I'm pretty sure those are linked um, to the actual orbit of the Earth and not necessarily to the time that passes, at least as far as I can remember. Now here's a project by Botchdi. Wow, today is a field day for bad pronunciations. And this one's called DIY Pen Animation. This one's pretty cool because it lets you customize the pen tool in Scratch. So the pen tool lets you draw stuff on the screen and here you can essentially set different settings for it and make it less thick. And it takes advantage of variables being passed into the pen tool to create these very, very cool looking patterns. And uh, you can even speed this up by using turbo mode which uh, lets you click shift on the little go key over here. And there you go, we got some, we got some pretty uh, trippy things, as they would say, pretty peculiar drawings here. Next up, this is actually quite peculiar. This is a polygon with different little balls falling down on it. And you can set the displacement, uh, or uh, yeah, the displacement of the different oscillations for the balls and make them do many different melodies. So you can change it to lots of different things. You can increase the amount of lines and you get some pretty cool sounding songs from it, like this, for example. Then of course, you can also get these really, really cool sinusoidal circle patterns. This is just reminding me of math class. And you can change the instrument. So yeah, this is a pretty cool instrument tool. I like these kind of demos that showcase something really simple, but quite interesting if you start messing around with it. This was made by Proxeal. Next up, I'm not quite sure whether I want to call this an animation or not, but it's this interactive system for creating logic gates here. You can hold down and like click a bunch of times on these buttons eventually. Yeah, yeah, there you go. We're, we're getting there. Ah, oh, there we are. And you can then connect different little uh, logic switches and logic gates to create logical circuits. So here we have an AND adder, I guess, and here's an output to spit it out, and if we turn both of these on, there you go, that goes on. So, I think this is pretty cool. There's a few presets here, you can, here's a SOAR, uh, exclusive OR. And we have a one bit adder, so there you go, you can add two bits and crit, get different numbers out of it. Here's a four bit adder, check it out, one, 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 and you get an output out of it, so I'd say that's pretty cool. And finally, I'm not sure if this really counts as an animation, but this is far too impressive to leave out of the video. This is an animation maker for Scratch, and I'll showcase a few features here, but basically it's a bit like stickmen animations that you can make with basic tools online, and, and you can move about these stickmen, and as soon as you move them in the way that you want them to be in, you can press space to capture a frame, and then if you keep moving them around, you can capture different frames. So in this story, this blue guy is about to uh, find violently attack the red one. That's what I'm trying to make here. So what's interesting is once you're actually done making the animation, you know, you've placed everything and you're ready to play it. If you click play, the animation actually interpolates. So it doesn't just move in static images. It actually moves between the different animation frames smoothly, which when I saw that, I was really, really impressed because just being able to do that is crazy. You can also introduce this block into the scene, but the block actually stays static, so it doesn't matter where you place it, if you move it in a frame, it'll always stay that way throughout the entirety of the animation. Yeah, but I think this is just so incredibly meta. Someone's made an animation tool in Scratch, which is an animation tool. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video about Scratch animations. There was a lot more stuff that I've probably not had a chance to look at yet, and feel free to leave any suggestions in the comments if you think there's any cool animations or demonstrators or demos or whatever that you think would be interesting for people to watch. I've been Denshi. These have been the most impressive scratch animations. Goodbye.